Norwegian mosque apologizes to Prince Hakon after three women refused to shake his hands. Let's see what happened. As reported in the Royal Central, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Hakon visited the Al Nur Islamic Center to show support after the August 10th shooting on the mosque in Norway. Many people noticed that three women did not accept the Crown Prince's outstretched hands as he attempted to greet them. Wahid Ahmed, information officer at Al Nur Mosque, told NRK they were unaware the women did not want to shake the hand of the Crown Prince. He has now issued an official apology to the Norwegian Crown Prince. He said, we didn't want the Crown Prince to end up in that situation, but we didn't know that the three women would not handshake. We therefore apologize to the Crown Prince that this happens. I feel like this is one of those things where like maybe one woman did it, and then the other two felt embarrassed and just followed along. Who knows, right? That might have happened. Um, he basically said hand greetings were not on his mind and therefore did not become a topic that was raised, right? If he knew in advance, we would have informed him. Some people are quite upset about this. They're quite upset that this happened and the situation occurred. And this is a situation where there's a different cultural values mixing and uh, people get angry because they feel like the, you know, this is an act of rudeness. From my perspective, uh, as a former Muslim, these women were not intending to be rude, but it may have come across that way. This is not an issue that's limited to Islam. So even in Islam, there is some difference of opinion, and some would allow men to shake hands with women. I remember reading that the Caliph Omar or some of the Caliphs took Baya, which is allegiance, by, by taking the hand of some women. So Prophet Muhammad supposedly did not, but apparently it is allowed according to some interpretations of Islam. The New York Times ran a story in April 2015 about several flights from New York to Israel have been delayed when ultra-Orthodox Jewish men have refused to sit next to women. Francesca Ho Hogi, was that Hoji, ha uh, had settled into her aisle seat for the flight from New York to London when the man assigned to the adjoining window seat arrived and refused to sit down. He said his religion prevented him from sitting beside a woman who was not his wife or daughter. Irritated but eager to get underway, she eventually agreed to move. Laura Haywood, 42, had a similar experience while traveling from San Diego to London via New York. She was in a middle seat, her husband had the aisle, when the man with the window seat in the same row asked if the couple would switch positions. Miss Haywood, offended by the notion that her sex made her an unacceptable seatmate, refused. I wasn't rude, but I found the reason to be sexist, so I was direct, she said. Representatives of the ultra-Orthodox insist that the behavior is anomalous and rare. I think that the phenomenon is nowhere near as prevalent as some media reports have made it seem, said Rabbi Avi Shafran. Rabbi Shafran noted that despite religious laws that prohibit physical contact between Jewish men and women were not their wives, many ultra-Orthodox men follow the guidance of an eminent Orthodox scholar, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, who counseled that it was acceptable for a Jewish man to sit next to a woman on a subway or bus as long as there was no intention to seek sexual pleasure from any incidental contact. Oh, she rubbed me the wrong way. Oh my goodness, I'm about to let let go. Like, like you gotta wonder, like, come on, how is that? Like, what are you thinking, right? Multiple travelers, scholars, and the airlines themselves say the phenomenon is real. The number of episodes appears to be increasing as ultra-Orthodox communities grow in number and confidence, but also as other passengers for, the, for reasons of comfort as well as politics push back. And Rabbi Yoshka Katz, a modern Orthodox Talmud scholar who grew up in the ultra-Orthodox Satma sect, said, When I was still part of that community and on the more conservative side, I would make every effort I could not to sit next to a woman on the plane because of fear you might touch a woman by accident, right? I haven't heard of this happening to Muslims before, but I know among the very religious, they will often get up and move spots if a woman will sit down next to them on the train or bus. That's right, because if you sit down next to a woman, you're somehow going to have sex with her tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. 
These conservative religious folks, they're stuck in the thinking that because God told them to do this, this is how they have to live their lives. Reason shows that you can shake hands with women without actually cheating on your spouse. It's like, it doesn't always have to be a slippery slope, right? What is needed is responsible, appropriate behavior and boundaries, not ridiculous over the line, over the top limits like this. Jewish men even have to separate the beds from the wives when the wives are menstruating. They're not allowed to even touch them. In Islam, you just can't have intercourse, but you can still sleep with your wife and touch her. Now, on this article called Ask the Rabbi, my family and I met with an Orthodox rabbi and his wife the other day. I noticed the rabbi shook hands with me, but not my wife. And his wife shook hands with my wife, but not with me. What's the big deal about men and women shaking hands? Isn't a handshake just a handshake? Answer, it's common enough that we don't think twice. A quick handshake when meeting, greeting, parting, whatever, whatever. What does Judaism have to say? Could a simple handshake be problematic? When listing forbidden sexual relationships, the Torah doesn't say don't do it. It actually commands us, don't come close to committing these acts. Coming close means any sort of physical affection that might lead to transgression. It's easy to understand why intimate relationships between unrelated men and women are problematic, but surely a handshake is nothing more than a polite greeting. Or is it? A firm handshake, a limp handshake, a hand held a tad too long. So much can be conveyed through this seemingly innocent gesture. My precious, my precious. There's a very fine line between casual touch and sensual touch, and interaction can easily slip from one category to another. We respect each other's privacy and dignity and protect our own while maintaining clear boundaries. So, basically, it's another slippery slope uh, kind of argument here. It's saying, like, you know, when you, like, just think about it. You're meeting someone new at the office. And instead of just shaking her hand, you gently massage it, you hold it for as long as possible, you wink at her, like, that, that'll make you one creepy dude, right? It's the context you have to look at and the situation. In fact, you can do much more that's flirting other than just touching with eye contact, with tone of voice, with, with the, the way that you're speaking, the way you're holding yourself. If you're meeting a dignitary of the United Nations, you're not there to get them in bed. You're there to give them the greeting and show that you can trust them, that they can trust you and you can trust them, right? That's why you extend your hand. You see, the roots of this thinking are not coming from Islam, but coming from way back from Judaism or even before that. These rules were meant to protect families, but have been stuck in stone and stuck in the Stone Age for 2,000 years or more and make little sense. This Bronze Age thinking is not good for humanity. These rules usually harm women. In most religious families, women are sequestered away and hidden and not allowed to have a career outside their home. They're primarily baby machines. They're undervalued and left behind while men progress. In some interpretations of Islam, men cannot travel with women. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just kidding, just kidding. It's the other way around. Women cannot travel alone without men. Let's recognize these laws for what they are. Man-made. Let's leave these archaic laws behind and move on to something much better, secular humanism. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, check out my support page. I could use your help. Thank you so much. This is Abdullah Samir signing out.